uh, we were able to discuss uh, the most uh, precious things uh, in his uh, word of life. Uh, so today, as we all know, uh, we have been conducting the volume study since uh, many days. Uh, and today we will uh, continue a study in the first volume, uh, page number 12, uh, para 3. Uh, can any of the brothers or sisters uh, read uh, from the volume? Anybody from Solomon Island? Can anybody read it? This book is a spiritual sign. It will be no basis that each reverend has to subscribe only, except where secular history may be called into a proof the fulfillment of scripture statements. Testimony of modern theology have been given no weight, and that of the so-called early fathers has been omitted. Many of them have testified in harmony with thoughts here in express, but we believe it to be a common failing of the present and all times for men to be believed certain doctrines, because others did so, in whom they had confidence. This is manifestly a fruitful cause of error, for many good people have believed and taught error in all good conscience. Acts 26.9 26, 9, yes. Uh, sister, pardon. Uh, sister, beg your pardon, sister. I think it's uh, next paragraph, sister. Uh, beginning from uh, uh, those interested students, uh, we would suggest, I think uh, page number 12, the last paragraph, I think you should start from there. No work is, last paragraph, no work is more noble. Correct? Am I correct? I mean, the, or even a general and has the examination, something. No, the next one. To the interested students, yes. we oh. would suggest. Yes, brother. Yes, brother, come again. To the interest student, we should suggest that it will be useless for him merely to scheme over this work and hope to obtain the force and harmony of the plan suggested. And the scripture evidence herein presented. We have endeavored throughout to present the various fragments of truth, not only in such languages, but also in such order, as would best enable all classes of readers to grasp the subjects and general plan clearly. While though an orderly st study is necessary to the appreciation of any of the signs, it is especially so in the science of divine revelation. And in this work, it, it is doubly necessary from the fact that in addition to its being a treatise on divinely revealed truths, it is an examination of the subject from so far as we know, an altogether different standpoint from that of any other work. We have no apology to offer for treating many subjects, usually neglected by Christians, among others. The coming of our Lord and the prophecy and symbolism of the Old Testament and New Testament, no system of theology should be presented or accepted, which overlooks or omits the most prominent features of scripture's teaching. Continue, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, we trust, however, that a wide distinction will be recognized between the earnest, sober, and rever reverent study of prophecy and other scripture in the light of accomplished histo historic facts to obtain conclusion which sanctified common sense can approve and two common practice of general speculation, which, when applied to divine prophecy, so too apt to give loose rein to wide the theory and vague fancy. Those who fall into this dangerous habit generally develop into prophets 
instead of robotic students. Thanks, brother. Thank you, sister. So, dear brethren, uh, the question uh, from this uh, paragraph is that uh, what is the method of Bible study pursued uh, in our textbook, uh, the divine plan of the ages? And why is careful and orderly study of this work essential to a thorough understanding of present truth? So that's the question. So we just now read uh, the comments of Brother uh, Russell. So may I know what uh, uh, you understand from this uh, paragraph? Any comments? Uh, uh, brethren, from my brethren of the Solomon Island, any comments, any thoughts on this uh, paragraph? The Jonah. I think the the thought here I get it from is to for the students to learn the word of God. To get uh, understand the historic events and the prophecy which prophesies according to the scriptures, and it must be a harmonizing together with the prophecy and the uh, the historical event in order to present the the word the word of the gospel. Oh, very good, brother. So that's the thought uh, that is presented, uh, and that's the intention of this uh, book uh, that a harmonized uh, uh, presentation of the divine plan, where uh, everybody are able to clearly understand uh, uh, the plan of God, which uh, He has made for the whole mankind. And it is highly impossible uh, uh, when, as we read this book. Uh, to just uh, skip over uh, some of the essential matters, uh, some of the important things uh, that are uh, identified uh, uh, in the Word of God. Okay, any other thoughts, uh, Sister Janet? Yes. One, one thing I get out from here is uh, as we students of the Word of God, we, we have to endure for the truth to say, put in order and to share the truth among those who they did not yet to hear the truth. We are the one, we are the one to present the truth to them as the students of the word of God. Very good stuff. So uh, that's also one of the, you see, uh, uh, views uh, that are presented uh, in this uh, main uh, volume, the first volume. That uh, the truth uh, has to reach uh, as many people as uh, possible and in a very systematic uh, way. Uh, so here, our uh, brother uh, Russell uh, is trying to present uh, the plan uh, of the ages uh, as per the scriptures. Uh, and as we keep on reading this volume, it is highly impossible for anybody to just skip the matters and uh, uh, just uh, overlook uh, some things. Uh. So, uh, here uh, some of the things uh, that are uh, presented are uh, made it in such a way that uh, the every person are able to clearly understand, uh, uh, more easily able to understand uh, God's plan. So here, the orderly study is uh, maintained in this volume. So a systematic order of studies. Uh, like for example, uh, we have seen our uh, basic class, uh, how brethren have taken the classes in a systematic way. See from class 1 to end of the classes, uh, the order is uh, in a very systematic way. You see, may it be how to study the Bible, then the ransom, then the three worlds, uh, then, as we understand the basic classes, the initial classes, how do you understand the Bible and all these things? Upon this one, you see, the foundation is built. Other foundation doctrines like uh, 
very important doctrines like uh, trinity you see the doctrine of hell the doctrine of soul and doctrine of antichrist uh, and the lord second coming is built up so it is not taken or is it not presented in a way which nobody can understand uh, it's not the other way around uh, that initially you take about god you see or speak about trinity then you come to Uh, see how to study the bible so that's not the way uh, truth is presented so similarly in this volume so whatever subject it may be it is presented in a harmonious way in a systematic in an orderly way you see orderly study is very very important and that is the order that is mentioned here and uh, here brother russell also tells uh, some of the examples like for example if we need to study science in this world how do we study science you see the study of science or mathematics any study in this world is done in an orderly way we don't just take uh, science in a haphazard way and uh, they study it in the world if somebody is uh, studying mbbs uh, you see the study is done in a very systematic and orderly way there is a particular study for a dentist you see he doesn't go and study about uh, you see uh, orthopedic similarly uh, orthopedic person doesn't come and study about uh, dental you see so each and every study has its own order so similarly the order that is presented in the studies of the scriptures uh, is uh, made clear and the efforts of it uh, is that uh, every person understands uh, the divine plan very clearly uh and uh one more thing uh, what we can understand uh, uh, from this uh, paragraph uh, is that uh, uh i hope uh, anybody has the thoughts uh, on uh, uh, this paragraph uh, uh, sister helen any any other thoughts you have on this paragraph brother daniel brother francis would you like to share any of your thoughts brother Okay, Jacob brother, would you like to share some of your thoughts? Okay, here some of the topics uh, that are covered uh, in this volume is totally different, uh, and uh, and some of the topics uh, which uh, generally nobody touches in any of the churches uh, may no. some of the examples of the topic which you already learnt in the basic class which you have never heard in any of the churches do you have any example brother jona do you remember or does some uh, topics come into your mind which you never heard when you were uh, in babylon yeah do you remember yeah. it yeah yeah that's uh, the other topic where i recognize it is uh, when we come to a point of when the 99 uh the one who lost the one who lost is especially the part that parable is so uh, the one who lost the shepherd is went out and looking for which is all 99 need no repentance and uh, the only one that lost that the suffet that comes and search for which the topic is included in that that explanation is uh, reveal that uh uh the all 99 need no repentance that's was uh that was a new things uh, i heard and uh, understand that many of the uh, nominal christian here they they refers to us uh, that that interpreted as uh, the that scripture should be for the individuals but it does not for individuals it's also cover all human beings and all the creations of god which is god made it 
So it brings us uh, a revelation that uh, we have to understand what the scripture really means and study it. Oh, wonderful, brother. Nice uh, thoughts. Uh, very good, brother. That uh, is a very thing to be appreciated. Uh, usually, that parable uh, is spoken in uh, the churches saying, uh, one for one person, uh, you see, uh, we need to go and search that one person and bring him to repentance. Uh, you see, uh, that's what uh, the uh, churches speak. Uh, you see, the non-repentant person, you see, the unbeliever has to be brought to the truth. Uh, but that's not the condition of this world. Uh, Generally, everybody concentrates only on that one person who doesn't, uh, you see, who needs repentance. But what about the 99 who doesn't need repentance? Uh, you see, nobody speaks and nobody concentrates about that one. You, as you told, you see, it's a very apt thing that a 99, you see, who doesn't need repentance is a 99% of God's creation. You see, they don't need, uh, you see, repentance uh, because all the holy angels, majority of them are with God. You see, but the one who is lost, you see, uh, and uh, whom the shepherd goes and seek and brings them back, uh, you see, is the mankind. Uh, where Jesus came in search of the mankind. And as Jesus saw that mankind, uh, he gave himself a ransom for them, you see, and uh, he took mankind upon his shoulders. Uh, the responsibility of the government will be upon his shoulders in his kingdom where he will restore everybody back to perfection, you see. So, uh, these are some of the thoughts uh, which are totally, you see, uh, not spoken or if they are spoken, it is spoken in, a, in other way around. Even these are the major topics uh, are covered in this volume, you see. And uh, any other subjects uh, uh, do you have in your mind? Uh, Sister Helen, do you have any other subjects uh, in your mind uh, which has uh, never spoken in the churches but you have you have heard the subjects here? Any basic classes do you remember, Sister? Which has made a difference to you, which has made an impact on your uh, uh, consecration? Sister, you need Uh, any day is there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, sister, any of the subjects uh, which you remember, which were totally new to you, uh, which you have never heard uh, in your uh, churches, do you remember any of those things? Yeah, um, about the hell, in subject about the hell. I mean, I went home just now. I mean, I came by yesterday, but the people, when I talked to people about the hell, and then they still believe um, the hell about the hell is people is going to die and yeah, God is going to throw people in the hell fire, in the fire. We were arguing about it last week and then uh, I tried to explain it because yeah, I've had here, we had to study with Jacob and then uh, and I've been in the witness and uh, I know I'm, I know everything that from the scripture. It doesn't. It doesn't say that uh, God is going to uh, throw people in the fire or yeah, kill people. I said. So I said to this uh, lady when I talked to her that uh, you know what I tried to make an example. If you if you have a son, uh, are you going to take your son and throw him into the fire? If you, I mean, if you mean to like example, I mean example. This is for Jesus. Uh, you think that, like, Jesus is not going to throw people in the fire. But, example, if you, as a mother, are you going to put your son into, a, like, something that tormented? Or what? And she said, no. Then I tried to explain it, but because I understand how she, you know, how she been through. So, because I've been through that same, uh, yeah, belief before. But then, uh, yeah, the people, they still need this, uh, uh a study to explain it to help them so yes there's many people out there they still believe in hell and all that but uh we are so lucky that we 
study about it and uh, we know about this uh, study about hell so we're free from all this thought about hell and all that so yeah i'm so happy and thank you thank you for this very good sir that's a good example of uh, some of the topics which uh, are treated in this volumes which are uh, never touched by any of the christians uh, like as you told the doctrine of hell uh, is a very important doctrine you see that actually uh, you see portrays the the character of god uh, the doctrine of hell which is uh, presented uh, today in the world that uh, god has made a hell fire to torture all mankind for eternity to eternity that portrays god uh, you see in a opposite way what is uh, actually you see presented in the scriptures so those topics also are systematically in a orderly way dealt in this volume sa as uh, sister told sister gave a good example uh, of a mother uh, does she torture her own son if he is disobedient uh, definitely not uh. even jesus our lord gave the same example you see if some of the child uh, comes and ask uh, bread uh, which of the father or which of the parents uh, will give uh, you see a stone or which of the child if he comes and has for a fish which of the parents shall give a serpent to eat jesus tells you being wicked know how good things to give then doesn't god who is the father of all creation does he not know what good things he has to give to his own children definitely then there should be a plan Now, what is the plan that is the endeavor of this book uh, to present the beautiful plan of god in a very understandable way in a harmonious way and uh, uh, do you do does anybody remember about any time prophecies uh, which are studied in the basic class any of the time prophecies which are studied anybody brother francis uh, do you remember any of the time prophecies which are studied uh, in the basic class brother uh um and time prophecy is uh, i think uh, the oh i mean end time prophecy is uh, the governing of the uh not not the end time prophecy but uh the end time prophecy is coming up from uh uh the emagidion i think the emagidion war yeah that's what i remember very good yeah the other prophecies coming from daniel the 70 days at 70 yeah excellent brother so that's one of the time prophecy which we have studied in the basic class which nobody touches in his world because nobody knows about what is the 70 weeks prophecy in a book of uh, daniel 9 chapter so we have studied the 70 weeks prophecy is actually you see telling about the time when jesus came at the first advent what is the time that jesus came in first advent how many years did jesus do his ministry you see there is nowhere in the bible where it is given that jesus did his ministry for three and a half years is nowhere given in the bible in the new testament nowhere at all and how do we tell that it is the three and a half years it is only based upon daniel 9 chapter 24 to 27 you see that is the the prophecy of the christ you see first advent you see the 70 weeks prophecy you see so these time prophecies you see which are generally overlooked among the christians today nobody wants to understand the time prophecies or the prophecies that are mentioned in the bible you see if they were not important uh, just do you think that would god give those things in the bible for us never dear brethren so all these things are given means 
it is given for god's children to understand his plan in a better way you see initially brothers uh, put a backdrop of the divine plan of the ages so in the bottom you could clearly observe the times uh, you see that are mentioned there you see where is it uh, picked up uh, it is all given in the scriptures uh, so that is made clear plain on the table so that everybody can clearly understand uh, that is the efforts uh, of this volume so make the divine plan very clearly so that everybody can understand uh, you see there are other time prophecies also you see no, about uh, brother mentioned uh, francis brother clearly mentioned about uh, daniel second chapter you see where uh, uh, you see the king nebuchadnezzar saw a multi metallic structure you see a stone uh, came and hit his uh, feet uh, began to pound uh, make it into pieces uh, then uh, a wind came and blew it away you see such a way that there was no sign or clue of uh, you see a statue being there so this is all uh, can be correlated to time prophecies uh, stone coming and hitting the image that first of all that multi metallic image is the uh, governments of this world the kingdoms of this world you see the stone represents uh, jesus along with the church uh, returning and pounding uh, you see the world uh, structure the governments of this world today all the governments of this world are being pounded uh, made weak uh, none of the nations have their own. original power which they claimed many years before you see initially there was ussr united soviet social republic so united soviet social russia you see but today do we have ussr you see we don't have a ussr it is uh, it's fragmented into russia so similarly beat america you see the world superpower You see, but uh, today the world superpower don't have so much of funds to, uh, where they can back up any other nation during war. You see, so day by day, you see what is happening. Uh, the powers of this world uh, are getting weaker and weaker because Jesus is pounding them. He pound it in such a way that uh, it will become like a dust. You see. and great wind will come and blow it away that represents the great time of trouble brother mentioned about armageddon you see in that great armageddon this you see kingdoms of this world shall be swept away he shall be no more found you see you can't even find a clue of it then what happens you see the stone which pound the image you see it stood there itself began to grow in the big mountain where it covered the whole world you see that represents god's kingdom so this is how god's kingdom shall be established on earth it start growing slowly see these are all some of the time portions you see some of the aspects some of the subjects which are dealt here dear brethren you see these things are neglected by many of the christians uh, second coming so we all studied about second coming uh, is it it so when will our lord return can anybody tell me when will our lord jesus return at second coming who is going to answer anybody from solomon island uh, yes 17 48 1748 is going to return a think i think hmm when christ the novus parish this the the presence of god there where hmm. where uh, yeah that is the presence of god so here is a we call it in the scriptures the coming of the christ eh? i think the Seventeen seventy four, eighteen seventy four. Oh, eighteen seventy four. Jesus is already. 
1874. Jesus has already come or is going to come. Is he going to come or has he already come? The, uh, I think the, the presence is already involved during the upper room, I think, the, and the return of Jews by, during 1874, I think. Very good. See, that is one of the signs uh, of uh, Jesus' presence, parousia. Very good. Isn't it? 1874. What happened? Uh, the parousia of our Lord into this earth atmosphere happened. Uh, See, does anybody, any of the Christians know this one? You see, the Christians simply know that Jesus is going to return second coming. But when, why, for what purpose and after returning, what is going to do? You see, nobody knows. As you told, the regathering of Israel. You see, the flourishing of the fig tree. You see, these are the prophecies. Dear brethren, that is... Uh, dealt in this volume. Just imagine all these topics uh, are there in the Bible. If uh, uh, they were never to be touched, uh, why would God give it in the Bible? If God has mentioned all these things in the Bible, then there must be a reason for it. Uh, so what is the reason? Uh, you see, even the disciples came and asked Jesus, uh, Lord, uh, please uh, uh, tell us the signs of thy coming. Sign! Why did you... Uh, they asked for the sign because uh, Jesus would never come in heaven just literally like that. Uh, the signs are important to identify him. Therefore, the signs were given. Therefore, the study of the Lord's second coming, you see. So, these are all uh, are done in a systematic way. You all heard uh, the Second coming subject, how brother has taken in a systematic way from, you see, stage one to stage two, three, four, five, you see, point by point, point by point, you see, that is the orderly way of studying the Bible. Okay. Now, while uh, doing the basic subjects, uh, you all would have heard about, uh, or read about, or studied about the tabernacle, isn't it? You all... Uh, Heard about the tabernacle class, you see, the river Jordan, the great pyramid of Giza, you see, then the marriage of Isaac, you see, Abraham, Isaac, Abraham offering his son Isaac. So, in this tabernacle or uh, in this river Jordan, what lesson did we learn? See, th those are all pictorial representation. You see, there were many symbols in that one. But what did you learn from these uh, symbols? Uh, Brother Jonah, we learned, we have studied about so many symbols uh, in this, uh, you see, classes. Uh. So, any thoughts on those uh, symbols? I think the symbols we learned from that, I think two, two rivers are there. And the other one is a uh, uh, river there. Yeah, the simple is uh, because the river is going out, which is uh, another one is uh, more dirt, dirty. So it's like uh, it's the waste is going, the less, uh, symbolism of uh, clean water and the dirty water, I think. That's, that's uh, I never really remember, but it's good to bike in the study. Yeah. Very good, Buddha. So, in River Jordan, we studied about the river that went out, you see. You see, from uh, uh, Mount Harmon, you see, it began to flow, you see. Then it came to Lake Hulla. Then it comes to Galilee. By the time the water comes to Galilee, it's completely muddy, you see, completely mixed with dirt. You see, mountain is a symbol in the Bible. Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of mountain in the Bible? Meaning of mountain in the Bible. What is the, what does the symbol represent? Anybody? Heavens, heaven, or kingdom? Kingdom. Very good. Daniel two forty four. We just now studied about that one. 
you see the stone that came and hit began to grow into big mountain the mountain in the bible represents kingdom god's kingdom that was originally established uh, you see where in garden of eden when adam was created he was the king of this earth uh, you see so that is the one of the symbols uh, now generally imagine without uh, understanding what this symbol means uh, if we just read the bible does it make of any use to us does it really make any sense to us no so this is how we put the code this is how we use the symbols there to understand the scriptures now okay now here we see that the mountain means god's kingdom what is the what is the meaning of water in the bible water sea river what does it mean in the bible anybody So water means a nation, I think. Oh, very good, brother. Excellent. Read Revelation seventeen, fifteen. Revelation seventeen, chapter verse fifteen. Revelation seventeen, chapter verse fifteen. Read. Yeah, please read, brother. Anybody? Revelation seventeen fifteen. Then he said unto me, The waters which you show where the hallowed seats are peopled, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Very good, sir. So people, the nations, uh, from this mountain, a river began to flow. Means what? Uh, people. You see, the generation of Adam. Uh, when he was when they were created you see when adam was created he was perfect you see very calm very peaceful condition in garden of eden lake khulla you see the sea level the level of perfection but once when adam sinned what happened you see he fell into sin you see the perfect you see nature in which was created he lost the perfection he lost the glory of god you see he became unclean so there the river began to flow you see and come to galilee that's the period of the first world so these are the symbols uh, you see the brain which we used to decode uh, you see many things in the bible now uh, after that one we have seen that after the uh, river that left uh, galilee What happened? Ah, uh, the river little bit became pure, not completely pure, but little bit pure. You see, in the first world, you see, the world was contaminated with sin. But after the flood, what happened? Ah, uh, a little bit, ah, uh, you see, sin was controlled. But again, how is the path of mankind crooked way? You see, then it came and ended to Dead Sea. You see, so many. You see things we learned about Dead Sea. You see daily. You see water is keeping on coming to Dead Sea, but still now the Dead Sea is never overflown. You see that represents the what does Dead Sea represent in the Bible? All the river come and meet at the Dead Sea. That's the end point. So, what does the uh, Dead Sea represent? Can anybody tell me what is the meaning of Dead Sea? Sin. Okay. What is the basis of sin? Death. Very good. So that's what the Dead Sea represents. So, Dead Sea, the grave, the mankind at the end reaches. Uh, the grave see it's a very good symbol now where do we pick up uh, all the meanings of the symbol uh, you see we just don't uh, bluntly think it this is all from the scriptures uh, you see dear brother but uh, the specialty of dead sea is that uh, you see whenever the fishes come alive into the dead sea they all die you see correct now because uh, 
because of his uh, excess uh, salt content, uh, none of the fishes can live there. So, as soon as it enters the Dead Sea, it's dead. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of fishes in the Bible? Fish. Fish. It's a man. Human Very being. good, brother. Very good. Jesus mentioned, no, I'll make you fishes of men. So, fishes mean mankind. So, mankind, you see, when he is coming through the crooked path, at the end, he reaches the Dead Sea, the grave, from which there is no escape. The Dead Sea doesn't, you see, after the Dead Sea, the river Jordan doesn't, doesn't travel further. That's the end point. That is the end of mankind. Dead Sea, grave, where all the fishes die. All the dead mankind go to the grave. See, these are the beautiful symbols, dear brethren. Now, how do we get the understanding of these symbols? Sir? You see, it is from the scriptures. Sir. Put this key, automatically the code will be opened. You will be able to understand the scriptures. So, brother Russell has used all these things in a systematic way, dear brethren. You see, huh? so that uh, a reader can clearly understand. Uh, therefore, you see, brother tells uh, clearly in the volumes uh, that, uh, you see, uh, where he says, uh, we have no apology to offer for treating many subjects usually neglected by Christians. Among others, uh, the second coming of our Lord, the prophecies, uh, the symbolism of the Old Testament, New Testament, uh, you see, no system of theology should be presented or accepted which overlooks or omits the most prominent features of scripture teaching. You see, so the symbols, the prophecies, so these are all presented in a systematic way. Therefore, you see, in last he says, we trust, however, that a wide distinction will be recognized between the earnest, sober and reverent study of prophecy and other scriptures in the light of the accomplished historic facts to obtain conclusions with the sanctified common sense can approve and a too common practice of general speculation, you see, which when applied to divine prophecy, is too apt to give loose reins to wild uh, theory and vague fancies. Uh. You see, here, as you keep on studying these volumes, uh, you can clearly make the differences to your brethren about the uh, scriptural studies and the vague, uh, you see, imaginations, vague interpretations, uh, which are outside the scriptures. Uh. That difference, uh, a reader can clearly make out uh, from this study of the scriptures. Generally, people speculate whatever thing they want. You see, uh, you see, instead of giving our mind to speculations, if you keep on studying these volumes, you see, we will be better understanding the Bible. Okay, dear brethren, so we will end uh, uh, this volume study here. Anybody has got any other comments? Any other comments? Any things uh, anybody like to share? Chona brother? Yes. Yes, yes sir. Brother. Yeah. Okay. Please. Jana brother, please. No, uh, I just uh, uh, thank okay. God. For okay, understand. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so briefly, uh, if we talk about this uh, paragraph, uh, so in this volume, Brother Razal wrote many things. So he wanted us to understand uh, many things, the purpose uh, and uh, briefness. See, uh, he is hurrying us. See, this paragraph recognize us to recognize the hurriedness of our day. Uh, then it tries it endeavor to be brief while covering important subjects. That is. Then it guides this paragraph, uh, this book, the volume study. It guides for the interested students because skimming will not reveal the full harmony of the divine plan. 
okay just so present fragments of truths uh, it should be clear for all the readers then the thorough study is required the divine revelation demands through and orderly it should be studied so diff in different standpoint from other works then all the neglected subjects are addressed in this volume so it discuss uh, the topics uh, often overlooked by christians so include the prophecy symbolisms and coming of our as like as brother uh, uh, explained very well and uh, he took some examples and it is a balancing study and uh, speculations it study uh, we study the prophecy with reverence and the historic facts so we avoid wild theories and the vague uh, speculations the uh, nominal christians what they do. so so we will be studying in depth right uh, we don't uh, skim we go in depth uh, with the studies that's what uh, we are studying so already brother uh, have given many examples it's, it's uh, so uh, very uh, interesting as well as very important to us uh, thank you thank you brother. that's my short comment thank you jacob brother uh francis brother any comments any suggestions any views i think i can give a comment here brother uh one of the thing i i saw in the bible is uh, like uh, Bible doesn't speak in the only literals, but it's uh, speaking in the symbolism and the uh, uh, parabolics and uh, yeah, poetics. Where we need to understand deep, deep as uh, we're going through. I can see that many way the Bible speaks. We need to understand like uh, those symbolism is more important to interpret the scriptures. And to uh, uh, put together with uh, in the uh, prophecy speaks. So it's very important to understand those uh, languages, not only one language that the uh, Bible speaks, speaking in different languages. Very good, brother. See, that's what we studied in the first class how to study the Bible. The 10 different methods or the languages that the Bible uses. You see, Bible doesn't use a single language. If it was so, then the whole world would have understood it. But God has hidden the gems, you see, in a hidden language. Symbolic language, parabolic language, prophetic language, type and antitypes. You see, chronological method various things are there so all these things has to be kept in mind you see very good brother. very good excellent jonah brother any views or any suggestions any thoughts of yours anything you would you like to add just jonah spoke yeah. oh that's what jo brother jonah spoke okay i thought brother francis okay uh francis brother would you like to add anything or uh, shall we pass on Okay, Sister Janet, Sister Helen, Sister Enid, any yes, thoughts, any views? Yeah, yeah. For me, I understand uh, those uh, studies. Like uh, before, I didn't understand what is meaning of eight, but right now I come and uh, I came and understand what is the topic of eight. When Bible speaks about eight, there's uh, three, three eight, yeah? There's uh, destroyed and remains and new eight. So I understand that there's a, yeah, there's have a symbols. Eight destroyed and eight remains and the kingdom of God, yeah, the new eight. That's what I'm, Madison, brother. Thank you, sister. Uh, okay, then, uh, anybody? Well, Godwin, would you like to add anything to 
comment on brother anything um uh, well thank you for the message brother yes um to add we see how even though these topics are on different ones we see the harmony um that going through them with logical explanations and that is what you know paul writes as well come i uh, sorry in isaiah come let us reason together so we see how we get the reasoning from the scriptures we also refer to uh, the right history um so all of that adds value to our study um so <laughs> um yep uh we we have experienced this in the basic study and we continue to do that uh in this ongoing um studies that we do so that's how we build up um our faith thank you brother thank you brother godwin uh as brother mentioned this is how we grow in uh, most holy faith uh, it is very important uh, to develop uh, christ like character uh, so here we hand our uh, uh, volume study now uh, may god bless these words uh, so i would like to hand over it to further uh, study